is getting very exciting out here as we have some of the most interesting takes on the Mermil Atlantean strategy. I actually get to see what Azamina is evolving with and some memento surprises along with so much more. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. So starting things off here, we're taking a look at how water has actually evolved now. Uh, we just got our hands on the new uh, Atlantean Mermail cards, and I, I figured you might see more like combo-esque versions of these decks. You know, people looking at like the exploding variations of these, but no. Uh, these are actually probably our highest end competitive variations of these cards you can actually see. And of course, yeah, the new Dominus Impulse card out here getting some free playtime. I mean, hey, when you're, you know, water, you don't really give a crap, you know? You're just moving on along with your day, doing the best that you can. Neptibus is still going to be the best card, I feel like, that you have working out for you. And, of course, I do see, yes, that is General Ryo and Friends actually being some very strong menaces out here in the meta. And we are actually citing the Minstrel for the hand rip. Good stuff. I'm happy to see this. Ooh, Memento. So keep in mind, Memento got some new toys like uh, Akihira on here, which basically helps do the OTK a little bit easier. But one interesting thing I saw from this list was <laughs> this was playing Goblin Biker Imprisonment, which I was like, huh, I, I don't know why this build is choosing to play this, but I, I guess, sure, um, I, I assume it's just to bring out the Memento Goblin, right? Um, which I guess is kind of cool, um, having a free tribute rotating on into this. Seems like a pretty cute little option. Um, and let, let's call it what it is here. You've got so many cool utility options in Memento as it is just to be able to kind of combo through it. They also only had a 14 card extra deck for this event that they uh, played at. So that's kind of crazy to think about out here is, you know, if this deck really was missing, you know, that one extra card, what would it have been to kind of change the flow of things? Cool. All right, Azamina with the Diabell Star package, Fiend Smith, all of this stuff. So this is uh, this is your life now. This is what you're, I guess, expected to be seeing out here in terms of the super competitive stuff because the Sinful Spoils Deception rolling on into the Azamina stuff with Rosselliogo and uh, Silvera here being your uh, two targets. Yeah, I know. I, I can't wait. Uh, I was, when I first saw this, I was like, really? Like, this is how we're evolving? I mean, we knew that the Azamina stuff would see some sort of play because it just it basically falls right in line with how the things have been for the tier one deck. And then of course, you know, Scarlet also getting some play time out here is also pretty cool actually. Uh, I love Scarlet, um, everybody loves Scarlet. Um, outside of that, also really happy to see Fu Warso actually getting some play time out here as well, but cool stuff, all right. Ooh, we have Fire Kings free. Ah, uh, just kidding, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're actually playing the Azamina package in this deck as well. So basically, you take the standard old Fire King package, you go ahead and you toss in your Dia Bell Stars, and then guess what? You have two Deceptions, one Azamina in here, so you can basically to your fusion summons to get to Silvera and Rosalago yet again. And of course, since we are doing the more Fire King side of the equation here, you do get to play Ukulonix. I really, really wish the TCG had Ukulonix right now. Because this is the last thing that we need to have Fire Kings actually be a viable deck at this point. And it's so disappointing that we can't explore this option and be able to have fun with this. Uh, I know. Fun, Yu-Gi-Oh! And of course, there's the Impulse again. Showing you guys, this card's pretty good. Ooh, we have Tempai Dragons free here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the post- Tempai Dragon builds out here are going to look pretty gosh darn boring. All right, It's like the only real major changes that you've got are, you know, a lot of these builds are kind of bumping back up to the two fodders now, ever since Sengen Summoning has gone to one. You do see Fuwa Waro so just dropping on into this deck because now you have all of this extra draw outlets for, you know, the power for you to get to things. And of course, hey, guess what? We get to play Dominus in the deck now. <laughs> 
Uh, I do find it kind of cool that this build is siding the Nightmare Phoenix. We are also siding two Dora Doras just in case we need them. And it looks like we are back on ye old heat waves out here. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I still think heat waves an extremely good card. I don't see a reason why you don't want to really be pushing this around because you just need this card to do one thing and it's win the game for you. Whoa, we have mer more Merlantian stuff for you here. Now, this build is actually playing the Virtue Stream, which is target a fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster you control, and two cards your opponent controls destroy them, and then you can banish it from the grave or target a face of monster on the field. If it's a water monster, next time it's destroyed, it is not destroyed. Uh, otherwise, its attribute becomes water. Um, otherwise, uh, this is a cool attack choice. I do see... We are playing the Kraken Scales in here for the 400 boost, uh, and what is it? Yeah, the monster effect. Uh, and of course, we are doing Triple Minstrel in here. Basically, this is the opposite side of the build that you saw earlier. You know, you're attempting to use more of the hand rip combo side of things, the Mula Glacia, the, the shave off, while the other build, I would say, was more of an attempt to like the Ice Jade General Ryo side of the equation. It is really cool though to see how much variation in the water decks you can have. Ooh, we have pendulums for you here. I always find it very interesting when Disc Blaster shows up in these decks, you know, just kind of be like, hey, hi guys, I'm here, like, I, I'm attempting to do something. Uh, this is Sulfacord, actually. So, I guess the biggest takeaway from this is the Supreme King stuff has kind of become like the anchor for the decks. Well, I guess because Supreme King Gate Condition is such a good card. You know, also, the, the get Dark Worm, just the ability to set up through this package is really good. So if a cord being like your second anchor, the Bambukus and the Unic are Kieran are to put up your interruptions. And you kind of just roll through with that. Like, you, you kind of establish the formulae to get to your victory. <laughs> Still can't believe that we're getting the, the fact that, like, the Supreme King stuff is just such a free W. If you can actually pull this off, is kind of insane to me. But hey, you know what? If it works out, it works out. Next up here, we have gimmick puppets. Ha, uh, yes. We are playing the Dominus Impulse in here as a two of. I mean, why not, right? Uh, also, considering the fact that the current limitations of this deck, um, you know, with the gimmick puppet of strings, they've been forced to play the one fiendish knight. Because the, the knight basically allows you to do the... I think it's the one extra revival to do the FTK. I just know you have to work for things a little bit more now that, you know, the gimmick puppet has already been restricted. Which, I guess, is fine. Uh, we are citing the extra terror baby and the scissor arms. Um, of course, the full FTK stuff. And we are citing an extra copy of the Argent Chaos Force in case it actually does come up. There's some games out here that I, I look at and I'm like, yeah, you really do need the extra copy of this just so you can kind of do your thing. Uh, outside of that, the, the current state the Gimmick Puppets is in, it's not like it's an unplayable deck. Um, you've just, you have to work so much harder for your victory win condition now. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't like that. Ooh, what else we got back here? So we have Ubel sporting off the Scarlet Sorrow, yeah. Um, you thought that, you know, things would be consistency upgrade? Yeah. Uh, I do find it interesting here, though, that they have cut down Engraver in this deck to two, and they are playing the one Lacrima down here, so I guess that's a quite interesting thing to see, you know, shaving off a little bit of that fat to, uh, still kind of achieve some interesting results. You do see we are still playing the Angel of Blue Tears. Well, I mean, you know, when Angel of Blue Tears can get you a pointer or the Black Goat Laughs, you're going to be putting your opponent in such a bad position. Like, it is so laughably hilarious, the things that you can actually do. Um, outside of that, we have some cute ideas here, I will say. Um, but you're still, even if this card goes to one, this build's only playing the one. That's hilarious. Ooh, we have more Fire Kings for you. So I would say that this would be your uh, super high-end competitive version out here. Still doing the Kirins, the one Arvada, the full package out here. You do see the Lacrima is still shining. Um, still doing the full package with this. All your Bice deals coming on in here. You do see Fuawarsa doing the thing. <coughs> I also see, hey, the ever-so-loving summon limit back here. As well, outside of that, I mean, we're not doing the extra Azamina stuff that you saw in the earlier combo builds. I, I do like the Azamina stuff. I think it's very, very cute. But 
should give you a little bit of an idea of what we're looking at here. So, what do you guys think? Please, leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons! Thank you! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.